Welcome back to the Business Development Podcast. You are listening to episode 21. And on today's episode, we are chatting about organization and structure and how by utilizing these two things, we can make you more efficient, more effective than ever. Stay tuned. The great Mark Cuban once said, business happens over years and years. Value is measured in the total upside of a business relationship, not by how much you squeezed out in any one deal. And we couldn't agree more. This is the the Business Business Development Development Podcast. Podcast. Based in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And broadcasting to the world. You'll get expert business development advice, tips and experiences. And you'll hear interviews with business owners, CEOs, and business development reps. You'll get actionable advice on how to grow business. Brought to you by Capital Business Development. Capital, let's do it. Welcome Welcome to the the Business Business Development Development Podcast. Podcast. And And now your your expert expert host, host, Kelly Kelly Kennedy. Kennedy. Hello, welcome back to the Business Development Podcast. You are listening to episode 21. And today we are chatting about organization and structure. But first, I would like to say just a quick thank you to Lasse Jorgensen of All In Productions. He was our guest for last Sunday and he did an absolutely amazing podcast titled Find Your Passion with Lasse Jorgensen. And you guys should definitely check it out. Lasse is a video production expert based in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He, uh, he just is next level. He has so much insight into how video can help you in your business, even things that I didn't understand or know. And uh, it was a really great interview. It was absolutely great to have you on the show. And if you guys have not had a chance to listen to that episode yet, please go back, listen to our very last episode, episode 20, Find Your Passion with Lise Jorgensen for just some amazing insight into video production. And I got another kind of announcement today just to chat about briefly. We are having some slight issues with our metrics, and I have been updated you guys with wrong metrics. Wrong, wrong in a good way, though. <laughs> I've I've noticed that my metrics on, on co-host have just been a little bit off. They're working on it for us, so I have great faith in co-host. They're going to fix this for us. But in the meantime, I think I've been telling you guys we've been hitting like 1,000 mile markers, 2,000 mile markers. Guys, you're not going to believe this. I looked on Spotify the other day just to see what our metrics were on Spotify. We have 18,000 streams on Spotify alone. 18,000, guys, on Spotify alone. That doesn't include Apple Podcasts or anything else. I'm still figuring that one out. But that means that we, in two and a half months, we have had over 18,000 downloads of of our business development podcast. And that is absolutely amazing. And I want to say to all of you listening, thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for continuing to come back week over week to listening to not only our old category, but our, our, our old shows, but also our new shows. And I really appreciate you guys coming on, following, subscribing, leaving me reviews. Next level, guys. I, I, I have no words. I am eternally grateful and I appreciate each and every one of you. All right, on to the show. Today's episode, I wanted to touch on organization and structure. I know it's not a sexy topic. I know it's not a topic that we're all super pumped and super thrilled to hear about. However, it has been something that in my life has helped me very greatly, especially in my business development career and my entrepreneurial career. And I, I want to I want to touch on it because I wasn't always this way. In the old days, I was that guy who had a a, a desk full of business cards. I was running Excel spreadsheets. We had a Rolodex. We used, you know, clunky software in Excel to kind of track everything. And I didn't take a lot of notes. And to be honest, guys, back then, I, I was not a very good business development person. You know, it took me some time. It took me life lessons. It took me good mentors. A mentor I'm going to shout out today. I'm not even sure if he listens to the show, but it's an old boss of mine, Selva Nadar. He owns Eng Inspection Services in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Selva is an amazing man, an amazing entrepreneur, has an amazing story. And I'm hoping one day that he will come on the show and tell it for us. But I learned an awful lot working for Mr. Nadar over the years. I, you know, I mean, I really cut my teeth at Eng. I really learned how to be a good business development person at Eng. And I owe a lot to that man. And I, I just want to shout out that he was always pushing me to listen to audiobooks, to get better, to just do better myself. And I would not be where I am today without Selva Nadar. And I hope you listen to this, Selva, because... You truly have meant a lot in my life. You've given me a lot of opportunity, and I appreciate everything that you've done for me over the years. But one of the great life lessons that Selva imparted on me was to utilize notes, to utilize 
a daily notebook and start to track things like things that you need to do today, prioritization of tasks, you know, get to put prioritize various company tasks, make the hard ones first, keep notes on everything you do. And you know what, I've been utilizing a daily notebook now for my business stuff, whether it be my business development clients, whether it be just for capital business development, or whether it's just priorities for me as an entrepreneur in growing capital business development or the podcast. And utilizing a daily notebook is truly been a life changing thing for me. And, and I think it will be for you as well. And it's a really easy thing to start with. What I like to do is I like to just flip to a new page, whether I'm working for, you know, one of my clients, or whether it's just a day that I'm making some notes for capital business development or for the podcast, I like to just put you know, what am I doing? Is it is it notes for the capital business development? Is it notes for the podcast? Is it notes for a client? Great, put their name up top. And then just right underneath, things to do today. And what you do, guys, is you just think about what are the critical tasks that you guys might have to do today? Like, what are the things that if you did them today would, would bring the most benefit to your client, your business, whatever it is you're trying to do? And just note five things, you know, like in my case, it might be send all my digital introductions. It might be update my pipe drive. It might be or my CRM, I guess, for the rest of you. Um, it might be to make 15 or 20, 20 phone calls today. It's just list out the things that that would be that would add benefit to your day. What meetings do you have? If you have meetings, you know, I mean, if you're in BD or you're an entrepreneur, you probably got like three meetings today too. make sure that they're on there and, and maybe start to prioritize them by importance and make sure that you are doing the most important things first. Okay, the most important things first. And unfortunately, guys, for the rest of you, the most important things that you need to do today are probably not the things that are high priority on your personal list. They're usually the harder tasks, right? But I can't remember where I heard this. I believe it was a book by Brian Tracy, but Brian Tracy is really excellent. If you guys like like entrepreneurial books or just ways to improve your sales and that sort of thing, Brian Tracy is pretty great. He's been around a long time, has a million books. But one of the things that he always talks about in his books is that you want to do the task, basically the task that you don't want to do, the thing that you are putting off the most is the thing that would improve your sales or business the most. And it's true, guys. It really is. It's like those things that you don't want to do are usually the things that are going to make you the most effective, that are going to really improve your ability to make sales, to make money, to do everything. So by doing this, by essentially creating yourself a little top five or a top 10 list for the day, it allows you to kind of just go through, check off what those things might be and go from there. And, and like like I said, guys, I you know, I mean, I'm I'm a very real person, right? Like I try to be very real with you. I, I don't try to hide anything. I was not always great at business development. I learned the skill and I got great at it. But when I started, I was not very organized. I was definitely not very structured. And frankly, because of those two things, I was not as efficient as I should have and could have been. And yeah, sure. Okay. When I started business development, CRMs weren't really a thing. Like they a lot of technology has changed to help me become better at what I do. However, it also took a, a choice. It took a mental choice in my head and lots of repetition to start to implement structure into my life that would allow me to be more effective. Guys, the thing that makes you effective in business development, in entrepreneurship, is being able to do the same thing repetitively over and over again, efficiently and effectively, right? The thing that is going to make you successful is the ability to do four or five very important tasks every single day without question, without slack. If you can do those things, you are going to be effective. Where we start to slip is where we start to have less structure in our life where, oh, you know, I don't need to make those calls today or I don't need to make that LinkedIn introduction today or Ugh, I'm feeling like crap. I don't think I want to do this today. <laughs> we all feel like crap some days. Believe me, I, I have felt like crap plenty of times. I, I'm going to have an entire show on feeling like crap, but having to do your job because as a business development person, that's a reality in our life. We have to be on all the time and it is not easy. It is not easy, but we have to do it because no one likes to talk to a sad, depressed business development person. That's just not going to work. It never has worked. It never will. And unfortunately, sometimes that is meant I need to set aside the challenges I'm feeling in my day, put on a smile and go to that meeting. Not always easy. And I will do a show on that, guys. I will address that because there's no easy way to really go around that. But yeah, we'll talk about it at a later time. But I guess the point that I was kind of trying to get at was 
we need to essentially have structure. We need structure. Structure keeps us effective, efficient. And by utilizing a daily task sheet, we are kind of holding ourselves to a structure. And if we can get to that and try to make those consistent phone calls, those consistent LinkedIn's, you know, having our day mapped out before our day even starts, I guess I should have specified that guys, we want to do this in the morning. Um, I guess that's probably pretty obvious. But if not, either the night before or the morning that before we start work, we want to look and we want to prioritize our day by creating that things to do today task list. Okay. All right, we want to keep an efficient and decluttered workspace. We need to make our workspace work for us, guys. Yeah, like I, I work out of a little room in my basement that's very much me. Like I have, you know, I mean, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm going to be straight with you guys. I'm a bit of a nerd. I have like model rockets in my room. I've been flying RC planes since I was like 16 years old. I got, I got RC planes in here. I got my dog. He likes to come in here and lay and hang out with me. I got my podcast set up. And this is like, this is just the room that I do my life in, right? I do my life in this room, but this room makes me happy. I like this room, right? I enjoy coming down to my workspace, sitting down and knowing that like, yeah, my day is about to start here. Like we have some work to do, but I'm, my room is me. My room is me. Okay. It really is just like, I hope your home office has a part of you. And if it doesn't, Put parts of you in it. Put parts of you in it. Make your workspace a place that you're not afraid to be at or that you're not disgruntled when you get into that that space, okay? Because whether you need a window to look out at the world, whether you got your dog next to you, whether you got your model planes, your rockets, or you know whatever else you got in your room. I got a bunch of board games in here too. I'm a bit of a board game nerd. Point is, is that, oh, I got an AC picture. <laughs> I, got, I got all sorts of stuff, guys, because this room, it's... It's it's where I'm spending a ton of my time. I'm spending a ton of my time in this room between business development podcast, between capital business development, my day to day stuff. This is just my space, right? I want you to make your space a great space too. another important thing about that is, is that you want to set up a space that you can feel inspired. You want to definitely have a good chair or desk that fits you. Yeah, make sure that you're comfortable. Make sure that you have a space that, like I said, that's not uncomfortable. And then we also want to make sure that we are utilizing our CRM programs, guys. So when we're talking about structure and organization, a CRM takes my messy old desk. It takes my messy old desk with business cards and Rolodexes and crap all over the place and Excel spreadsheets and phones. And guys, it, and it puts it all in one place. That's why a CRM it's really changed the world. And I, I harp on it. I know I harp on it on this. I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk about CRS. But if you're if you're an entrepreneur, if you are doing outside sales and marketing for your business, if you are making any type of phone calls or emails for your business to to people to potential clients to potential partners, you need to be tracking this information, you need to be tracking their information, their contact details, their emails, their phone numbers, all your conversations with them, all your introductions and emails, we need to be tracking them. And a CRM is a great thing because it takes all of those things and it puts them into this just space for you. It puts them into this one easy space for you to follow it all and, and know what's next and know what the next steps are. It truly makes you a thousand percent more effective than our old desk full of business cards, than our old Excel spreadsheets. It's just it is critical. It is truly critical. If you are still, if you still are sitting right now listening to this podcast, you're looking at your desk and you have a pile of business cards and you have an Excel spreadsheet in front of you, please do us all a favor. Do yourself a favor. Do your bosses a favor. And especially if you're an entrepreneur, do yourself a gigantic favor and get yourself a CRM. Like I said, I always recommend Pipedrive just because it's the one I've used for years. That doesn't make it the best. It just makes it the one that I have used for years. I love it. I love the utilization of it. I think it does everything it needs to do and it is cost effective. And to me, that checks all the boxes. So I use it. Are there a thousand others? Absolutely. There are a thousand other CRMs. You pick which one works best for you. But the reality is you need a CRM that does work for you. We need to make sure that we are inputting all of our digital introductions. I actually got a question about this earlier this week and they were kind of asking like, well, do we need to put in everything? No, you don't need to put in everything, but you do need to put in anything that has potential, okay? And it's up to you to decide whether or not it has potential or not. It's up to you to kind of make that call and say, yeah, I talked to this guy on LinkedIn. It looks like a good potential. Should I add him to my digital introductions? If you think you have the right person who can buy your product, has a need for your product, 
then 100%, you should be inputting that guy or that gal into your CRM, okay? You should be inputting them into the digital introductions, the first stage of your... And then, yeah, if it's somebody who maybe isn't a hot lead or, you know, you made an introduction, but great, just it's not it's not feeling it, it's your call. Don't, don't put them in. But you need to make sure that if they are potential, if they do could potentially buy your product or service in the future, or or they could be a partner, or they have a potential to you in one way or another, you should definitely be inputting them into the digital introductions. How about what do we do with all of our business cards? Okay, I get it. Like we're still going out to expos, we're still meeting new people, we're doing networking events, we're getting tons of business cards. I love business cards, guys, I harp on them all the time. I build beautiful business cards, my capital business development business cards are next level. I have some that I'm being created right now by impact graphics in the city. They're going to be doing up some really great business development podcast business cards for me to hand out at networking and networking events. But we don't necessarily need to keep them anymore. And you know, I mean, I feel kind of bad because it's like, yeah, we spend a lot of time we build all these sweet business cards. But guys, if if they've taken them from you, if they've then inputted you into their CRM, or they've put you into their contacts, the business cards done its job. It's done its job. It's okay, whatever they do with it next, who cares? And I want you guys to think about this too. You don't need to necessarily keep all these business cards, you can if you want, you can build yourself a little Rolodex, you can build yourself a business cards book, you can go to like Staples in Canada here, and buy a whole bunch of like, binder binder pages that hold business cards you can build yourself a gigantic binder it's still cool right like, like i'll be honest i do this sometimes i don't do this all the time anymore but sometimes i still keep all the business cards and i like to put them in a little binder but i may never open that again why because i also input all their data into my crms and so now it's just not really that critical so i guess what i'm getting at here is when you get your business card, when somebody hands you a business card, a nice organized thing for you to do is when you get back to your home office or your office or wherever you're at, input them into this. Now it's all in one space, right? There's also other management systems for business cards, guys. There's apps for your phone. There's all sorts of stuff. I'm just saying have a structure. Have a structure that works for you so that you aren't relying on a physical business card in order to move forward, in order to have that all in one place. We want to be inputting their information into our CRM under, under a new contact is what I like to do, okay? Have a structure, obviously, that incorporates the CRM on a daily basis. This is critical. This is critical. A CRM is useless if you're not using it, okay? I use my CRMs every single day. Pipe gets used every single day. I have a pipe drive for capital business development. I have an individual pipe for all of my clients. And I utilize it on a daily basis to track my work, to track what I've done. It's useless if you don't use it, okay? The key is always going to be we have to utilize our CRM on a daily basis, we have to incorporate it into our daily routine. And the more we incorporate it, the more we utilize it daily, the more organized and structured we are going to be and the more effective and efficient we are going to be, which is our goal as entrepreneurs, business development people or any type of marketing people, we need to be effective and efficient and utilizing your CRM every day will do that for you. Make sure that your CRM is set up properly to track everything. Okay, you can set up most CRMs to incorporate sometimes phone calls, definitely emails. You can basically have your CRM whole emails out of your day-to-day -day email and assign them to that client that you've inputted into the CRM, which makes it real easy to track those conversations. So once again, it, a CRM is only as effective as you allow it to be. It's only as effective as you allow it to be. So if you have a CRM, make sure you are utilizing all the features on it. Make sure that if it has email integration, you are, you are putting your corporate email on there so that when you are sending emails, they're automatically being routed into your CRM. Some of them have phone. I've never utilized the phone side, but I know people have. Some of them, you can use the phone right through this and track all the phone calls. I think it might even record them for you so you know what was said. There's a lot of ways to utilize. And if we are utilizing it to its full potential, it is only benefiting us. So make sure that you are you have your CRM set up correctly. And at bare minimum, it is tracking your emails. Okay. Make sure that your CRM has the correct workflow. Also critical guys, the CRM has stages for a reason it allows you to take a quick glance at your screen and know okay this guy's here this guy's here this guy's here these ones have the highest potential of a meeting these ones are are potentially moving into a meeting stage this one has a future opportunity so i'm just going to say it right now this is my typical um workflow to my crm stages okay I start with LinkedIn digital contact. This is the very first stage that you you basically input any potential future opportunity into, okay? When we have 
reached out when we've done a little bit of detective work, we found out maybe the contact phone number or the direct email for these LinkedIn digital contacts. We make that initial contact. We move them into the next stage. Stage two is contact made. Contact made is my weekly follow-up stage. These are the people that I know I have the right person until they disqualify themselves. I know that I either have their email or their phone number, and I'm reaching out to them on a weekly basis until one of two things happens. They either disqualify themselves by saying they don't need my service or product, or they say, hey, you know what? This is super interesting. Let's set up a meeting, okay? And if they disqualify themselves by saying, hey, you know what? I don't have a need today or something like that. My next stage, stage three, I like to call back burner. Back burner means they've either said no, but there might be a future opportunity or maybe I just don't have the right person, but I'm not necessarily willing to do the digging to find out another person. Like I don't necessarily see like an immediate need. So what I like to do with these guys is I move them into stage three, which is called back burner. Back burner is kind of like low priority stuff that maybe you can come back to later on a rainy day, but it's not critical. So stage three for me is called back burner. Stage four, I like to call future opportunity. These are great. These are great leads. These are people that I've had a great conversation with. They were super interested. They just, you know what, Kelly, we don't need your service today. We don't need that today. But hey, you know what? Try back in six months. Try back in six months. Great. That person I moved from contact made into future opportunity. So stage four is called future opportunity. Stage five is meeting booked. This is where we're trying to get everyone. Meeting booked is contact made. I've reached out to them. They're interested. They want to chat further. And I asked for a meeting. Keyword, I asked for a meeting, <laughs> right? Bravery, guys. We got to be brave. We have to ask for what we want. We want the meeting. We have to ask for it. We've asked for the meeting. They agreed. Boom. They are in meeting booked. And typically what I'll have is, you know, I'll just make a note on their on their particular CRM page. It just says, hey, meeting scheduled for whatever, May 15th or whatever the date is. Okay. After meeting booked, after we've had that meeting, I move them into, I believe we're one, two, three, four, five. We are in stage six. Stage six is next steps. Next steps. Okay. Next steps means that we have had the meeting and there are follow-ups, whether or not I need to follow up with them in two weeks, whether or not I need to pre-qualify and fill out a pre-qualification form for them, or maybe they had they said, call me back in 10 days and we got an order for you. Great. They move into next steps. My last stage, my last stage is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stage seven is current clients. So obviously this one's pretty obvious, guys. Now this moves into the account management stage, okay? So typically what I would recommend at this point, they've ordered from us, they are now in current client. At this point, you, whoever the account rep is at your company, the person who manages active clients, remember, I like to differentiate, I don't think this is a BD task. And you know what, I know I, I, know I get a little flack for this, but in my personal opinion, business development should be for new relationship generation. Once that relationship is generated and established, you should have account managers manage so many clients at your company. So in this case, once they're at that account management stage, my recommendation would be, or in their the current client stage, sorry, once they're in current client stage, you want to have account managers handle these and you want to have your BD people go back to the beginning and start to move people through this process once again. Okay. If we are utilizing our CRM properly, if we have our CRM with a good workflow, that's easy to manage, easy to see, we are just going to be more effective, more efficient, more organized and have structure and it is going to work. Trust me on this guys, it's going to work for you. Let's chat a little bit about meetings. There is definitely organization for meetings. Okay, guys, we always want to prepare for our meetings, we need to know who are we meeting? What is their background? Where have they worked? What is their schooling? Do we know what do we know about them? We don't want to go into a meeting blind, okay? We never want to go into a meeting blind. We want to know who we are meeting, what their background is, the company info for the current company they're working with or the current company they own in the case of a lot of these presidents we're meeting with, right? We need to know something about them. We want to have a good general idea of who they are, what they do, why we want to meet with them, what products and services they sell, what they specialize in. The more information we can know about our clients, the more effective we are going to be in the conversational part of that meeting, right? We're going to know what questions to ask. We're going to be better in general. We're going to be better people to meet with. And that is on us, okay? As, as, as the people who asked for the meeting, as business development people, or as entrepreneurs looking to kind of make new connections, if you ask for that meeting, the onus is on you to learn as much as you can about the person that you are meeting with, okay? 
We want to show up at least 20 minutes early to prepare, go over notes. Guys, I get to meetings typically, especially lunch meetings. I'm there usually 30 minutes early. Why? Because once again, the onus is on me to, to review and know as much as I can about my client, okay? So I like to sit down. I like to review my notes. I like to think a little bit about the meeting itself. I like to kind of mentally prepare myself, maybe have some water and just relax for a minute so that I am my best for the meeting, okay? That is on us. We never, ever, ever want to be on time or late for a meeting, guys, especially as BD people, especially as entrepreneurs or people that asked for the meeting, the onus is on you to be early. You want to make it as easy for the person you're meeting with, your client, whatever it be, as possible. And that means that you need to get there early. You need to get seated. You need to do some client review. You need to make sure that you have some brochures with you, some material, make sure you got a business card. Make sure that you can text your client about 15 minutes before the meeting starts, okay? We want to text them. Why? We need to let them know where we're sitting, what we're wearing, what we look like, because they may have never met us before. So it is our job to make life as easy as we can for the people we are meeting with. Make them jump through less hoops. You guys know my motto. We want our clients to jump through as little hoops as possible. Why? It's just the right thing to do. It's just the right thing to do. And clients, they don't have time to be, to be nervous or trying to find you. If we do this right, it makes the whole meeting flow more efficient. It makes you look more professional. Trust me, guys, be at your meetings 20 to 30 minutes early to prepare to go over all those things. Make sure that you have something to write on, okay? I always go to a meeting with my trusty capital business development padfolio. I give all of my all of my employees capital business development padfolios. Why? It's just professional. We need to have a space to put our business cards, to be able to put a couple brochures, to be able to write on, to hold our pens, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's important, guys. It's important to have something to write with that looks professional. I really recommend that you guys go pick up yourself a little padfolio. They're really great. You can put brochures in them. You can put your business cards. You can put pens. You can, you can just be ready. You got it all. And, and I don't, I do not show up to a meeting without one. And in my opinion, you are unprepared if you show up to a meeting without all of those things. Make sure that you update your CRM after the meeting. Okay, guys? So immediately, when you guys get back to the office, when you get back home, you just had a great meeting, input the notes from the meeting. What were the findings? What were the opportunities? Move them into that next step stage, guys. And then make sure that you're putting somewhere in there to follow up based on, based on that meeting itself. Okay, guys, well, that's it for the organization and structure discussion. Organization and structure will make you better at all business and marketing tasks. Incorporate these things today and watch your efficiency and success rate increase. All right, well, I want to give some shout outs. We're doing shout outs and it's great. So Wednesdays, I want to try and do some shout outs. And I just want to do four shout outs today. One is to Tatsiana. Zamet, Zametlina and Tyler Rebkowicz. All of these people reached out to me over the last week. Let me know that they're really loving the podcast, that, that they appreciate me doing that. And I want to say that I appreciate all of you. So thank you so much for listening to the podcast, for subscribing and for sending me little notes because I appreciate it greatly. I just want to chat really quickly about the Quill Podcast Award nomination. We have nominated the Business Development Podcast for the Quill Podcast Awards. I need you guys to go and actually nominate us, though. And so you can you can go to just type in Google Quill Podcast Awards. It'll be the first one, 2020. You can go to my LinkedIn. You can go to basically anywhere in my LinkedIn space, whether it be the Business Development Podcast page or my personal page. There's like a thousand links on there for you guys to click and just nominate us. And you can nominate us for any new business or new, new podcast, new business podcast or business podcast in general. You can nominate us for any of those things, guys. And we would appreciate it greatly because it would, it would be huge. If we could win an award like this, it would help us to expand our reach. And I can't do it without you. So please, if you have not nominated the Business Development Podcast yet, please hop on to the Quill Podcast Awards 2023 and just, just nominate us. It takes two minutes and ugh, eternally grateful, eternally grateful. Please do send me any questions that you guys may have. I would love to chat. We're getting a lot more kind of interaction back and forth. If you have questions regarding your business or maybe some things you're doing, if you guys could officially send them to me at podcast at capital BD.ca, that's I will get back to you. So if you have questions regarding the podcast itself or regarding some business questions, please send them. Maybe I can even address them on the show. 
please do leave us a review. You can leave us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can actually do it right on the Business Development Podcast website. Please leave us a review to let us know how we're doing. And if you could follow, like, and share us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, once again, guys, it, it helps us expand our reach. And we do need that. We do need your support. And the best way you can help us is by following us and by, by giving us a quick rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Once again, guys, this has been episode 21 of the Business Development Podcast. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you so much. It is unbelievable to think that we have close to 20,000 people listening to us. That's just crazy. It's it's hard to believe for, for a podcast that started and it's only been a couple months. So definitely appreciate it. And until the next time, guys, we'll catch you on the flip side. This has been the Business Development Podcast with Kelly Kennedy. Kelly has 15 years in sales and business development experience within the Alberta oil and gas industry and founded his own business development firm in 2020. His passion and his specialization is in customer relationship generation and business development. The show is brought to you by Capital Business Development, your business development specialists. For more, we invite you to the website at www.capitalb. See you next time on the Business Development Podcast. (laughs) 